Video game adaptations are complicated. Adapting a video game into film or a TV series has proven to be a challenging task over the years. With a multitude of intellectual properties in the gaming world, these adaptations often struggle to achieve the narrative depth and structured required for an engaging cinematic experience. In some cases, filmmakers completely disregard the source material, opting for simpler storylines or hoping that merely attaching the game's name will guarantee instant popularity. Notable examples of this include the live-action adaptations of Street Fighter and Tekken in both the 2010s and the 90s. Of course! These challenges persist in various other attempts to bring video game stories to the big screen. Amidst the vast sea of underwhelming adaptations, a few exceptional ones do stand out. Take, for instance, the Super Mario Bros. film, which successfully captures the game's style and ambience through its character designs and environments, giving something that audiences did actually really enjoy and like. The Sonic movie is also worth mentioning. Uh, it's a rare case of where the movie studios and Hollywood actually listened to us and changed this design to make it look less creepy and uncanny. It's scary. And of course, there's other brief mentions I can give that has decent scores and, and the audience seem to have liked it pretty well. This indicates that in recent years, there's been a notable improvement in the quality of video game movie adaptations. People are beginning to pay more attention to respecting the source material of these games. When it comes to Arcane, the creative team behind the show remarkably managed to encapsulate the essence and viral aesthetic of the League of Legends universe. We witnessed the creator's genuine passion and unwavering dedication to crafting something that they and the fans will enjoy. Armed with both their prior experience in a similar style through the music videos, and a wealth of written source material. It was virtually guaranteed to set a new standard for video game adaptations. It even brought new people into the franchise like me. In my limited League experience, I've only faced off against bots. Playing against real players is, is a bit intimidating right now, and I've only tried a few games. The reason I'm not too keen on the player versus player thing is that Whenever I see players trash talking and being mean to each other, it just turns me off even more from the game. Just imagine you're playing a game and someone destroys their entire computer setup in front of you. But, I gotta say, one thing I absolutely love about this game is its lore. The lore is the only reason I'm here. It has consistently impressed me with its top-notch writing, rich and detailed contents among all of the characters that it has, but I have to say, one character I always favored above the rest was Jinx. There's something magnetic about the character. Her steampunk goth appearance, those distinct braids, and her intense energy. I love it. She was introduced in 2013 as a playable character for the game accompanied with a killer music video to go along with her debut. As far as I could research, she has always been well received, being a fan favorite among players. She was designed by concept artist Katie DeSouza as a concept for potential characters that would potentially make it into the game. DeSouza wanted to create a female villain character that is insane to the point, who is beyond saving. The concept design, codenamed Psycho Arsenal, remained on the Riot Games bulletin board for a long time, until lead champion designer August Browning decided to further develop the character along with DeSouza. Her design was more based off of Golem and the Joker, 
They avoided making her have a more sexual persona, trading it off for a more unhinged type of personality to set her apart from the other female champions from the game. She is primarily depicted as a slender, pale woman wielding massive weapons three times her size. When it comes to her, her biography in the game, her story was written by novelist Graham McNeil. Her story goes as this. Jinx is a criminal who has a need to spread chaos and destruction anywhere she goes, to setting off colorful explosions and playing pranks on citizens of Piltover that ranges any anything from annoying to extremely dangerous. She's crashed a wedding because she was bored and she hates being bored. Jinx has become a widely known criminal against Zahn and Piltover. She doesn't care about destroying private property or hurting people. She just wants to wreak havoc and have fun doing it. When it comes to her childhood, there really isn't much to say about it. The only thing that it says on her on the website page and the wiki and everything like that, that isn't related to Arcane, of course, is that she was an innocent girl from Zon, and there's nobody knows what happened to her. Nobody knows why she is the way she is. So for the longest time, fans theorized that Jinx was related to Vi, another champion in the game, because of her game lines. You think I'm crazy? You should see my sister. It's really interesting how they withheld specific details for an extended period. When I conducted some more research on whether Vi and Jinx were related, I found that they never explicitly confirmed it ever. In an interview with Ghostcrawler, the closest we've ever had to any, any confirmation or anything, he hinted at the possibility, but the narrative story writer seemed to have a bit of a different perspective and said, no, 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 they're not related. It's as if they had a deliberate plan from the beginning, which is extremely clever. If that was the case, that's clever. Now that Arcane's been out, we can finally immerse ourselves in the mysterious depths of Jinx's character. The series takes us back to the very beginning, offering us a glimpse into the early lives of Vi and Jinx, shedding lights on the facets of Jinx's character that have remained hidden until now. But before we really, really delve into it, I do have to preference something first. It's important to at least address the mental health topics that I am going to be bringing up later in the video. It's a topic that demands the utmost sensitivity, especially when translating it onto the screen. Writers often find themselves walking a tightrope, attempting to capture the essence of these intricate struggles without sensationalizing them or trivializing them. However, with Powder slash Jinx, as I will be using those names interchangeably, employs a subtler approach. Without overtly labeling it, we witness her grappling with symptoms that align with schizophrenia, trauma, PTSD, and possibly even associative identity disorder. These are weightly battles that can reshape an individual's very existence. Before we delve deep into her character arc, I first want to clarify that I am not a therapist or a doctor, so I cannot diagnose any conditions that people have. But as someone who's had mental health struggles myself, I do recognize the significance of honoring the character's journey without attempting to box her experiences. It's essential to pay homage to those who genuinely navigate these hardships. With all that said, let's continue. Arcane Jinx kicks off innocently enough, a young girl striving to carve out her identity. Emulating her siblings, constructing inventions to earn her place and help her family. It's a classic narrative archetype found in numerous stories. Of course, using Star Wars as an example, Luke Skywalker yearning for the thrill of adventure and wanting to be like his father, or Ahsoka Tano's unwavering determination to prove herself to Anakin Skywalker. You expect Jinx's journey to mirror a similar trajectory of growth, then the unexpected unfolds. 
in a tragic twist of fate, she inadvertently kills her family by throwing a bomb into the same room they were in, and from Powder's perspective, is abandoned by her sister Vi, as she gives Powder the name Jinx out of rage. It's a gut-wrenching revelation, particularly for such a young character like Powder, who's only like 9 or 13 years old at the time, especially since she's very dependent on Vi, as she's the closest family she has and someone she seeks approval for. Her other siblings always wrote her off as someone who could never be good enough. Combined with the loss of her family and the fact she messed up to the point of getting them all killed destroyed her mentally. When Silco encounters her, she reaches for any comfort she can get from him to process the guilt and extreme pain she's going through. And Silco, having gone through the same things as she did, comforts her and brings her in as his own. Fast forward to Jinx's betrayal as the story progresses, we witness a fierce fighter with a chaotic undercurrent. Anything can trigger her, and yet, a part of you yearns for her to rediscover the innocence she once embodied when the series first kicked off. However, reality has other plans. Her dependence on Soko becomes increasingly palpable, bordering on unsettling as he becomes the sole figure she trusts and believes. The show artfully provides glimpses into Jinx's psyche and the eternal maelstrom she navigates. She drifts in and out of manic episodes, with moments of respite found in her gadget-making endeavors and her connection to music. She makes copies of her dead siblings as a way to cope with the guilt. She is talking to them as if they were still alive and criticizing her to this day. In the episode Happy Progress Day, she imagines herself talking to them, being afraid that Silco is going to think she is weak for shooting a woman who happened to look like her sister, and having a mental breakdown while she was supposed to guard the cargo that they had. She's basing her self-worth and getting upset over what Silco thinks of her. This makes her angry, so she does anything to continue to prove herself to him. This leads to events later in the episode where she blows up an enforcer building to steal the Hextech gemstone. Two episodes later, she does reunite with her sister and at first, she's in shock and awe. She's overjoyed. She has her sister back. Vi doesn't hate her. But as soon as Caitlyn, the enforcer that's been investigating Jake's whereabouts, walks into the scene, Powder starts to think that Vi has betrayed her once again and is also giving Caitlyn all of her attention, making her jealous. This whole situation isn't helped by the fact that the Firelights, which are also led by Powder's childhood friend, attack them for the gemstone. They knock out Vi and take her away, leaving Powder alone just as she did those many years ago. It's a misunderstanding that's so gut-wrenching to watch because you just want to see Jinx have a good ending. Eventually, she does find them, but her childhood friend, Echo, goes to fight her. He's saddened by what Jinx has turned into and hesitates to land that last punch. Jinx is also saddened by this, and at that point, you could see in her face she just wants to give up. Just when things seem really bleak for her, Silco saves Jinx and the shimmer is injected into her so she keeps on living. It leads to her going through even more pain and being plagued by even more visions. As the series concludes, Jinx has the idea that Soko is getting ready to turn against her as well. But he isn't. However, Jinx is so far gone in her trauma and misunderstands the situation again. She kidnaps Soko, Vi, and Caitlyn, setting them at a dinner table akin to Alice in Wonderland, and stages Jinx's insanity in physical form. Jinx tells Vi that she created her, holding disdain for her sister for her actions back then. She has dwelled on it to the point the pain, anger, and sadness has consumed her. Jinx breaks down again, fighting the overwhelming thoughts, and during the struggle, she ends up shooting Silco dead. The last words that he gives to her is that she's perfect just the way she is. And with that, Jinx has 
embraced her new identity of chaos. Jinx has weathered unimaginable trials and she just finally reaches her breaking point. Her journey is a travesty woven with tragedy from the very start. And while her tale isn't concluded, it's evident that she's evolved far beyond the innocent girl that she once was. On a broader scale, Arcane could have quickly fallen into a trap of misinterpreting Jinx's character. She could have been reduced to a mere echo of a character like Harley Quinn, her madness glorified without depth. And while I like Harley Quinn, this trend comes in with a lot of characters, and this is where it can come to harm. Romanticizing insanity, inadvertently or not, perpetuates harmful stereotypes as seen in the plethora of TikTok trends or shows using real mental health issues as a way to scare people or make their characters more attractive or scary. Nevertheless, it's okay to acknowledge that Jinx's aesthetic is fun, but don't forget the weight this character brings. In essence, Jinx remains an enigma, a character who has managed to captivate people even without fully immersing themselves in the League of Legends world. Arcane has breathed life into her, taking us on an explorative journey into her complexities. As a viewer watching her on the screen, going through those many twists and turns of her character arc is fun and fascinating. I'm really happy Riot is portraying mental health with the sensitivity and depth it deserves. With season 2 in the distant future, half of me hopes that Jinx might see some kind of relief from the hell she went through, but the thing is, is she's eventually going to evolve into game Jinx, and those stories will mesh together into one thing. So I don't really have a lot of hope for that, but I feel also Riot has made the show very open-ended on what can happen to her and other characters that ended off in the first season. And to wrap this up, Arcane Season 2 is coming next year, so we don't have to wait much longer and we can finally know what happens with everyone whose fates are we're very unsure. And um, for all you who want to play League, after watching Arcane, like I, like I did, good luck. But I will say, you know what isn't maddening and going to drive you crazy and destroy your computer? Steamline! An action-adventure game where you get to switch between ice and fire to defeat little enemies on the screen. I actually personally made the art for the whole game, so... I'm excited to share this with you. It's not really a sponsorship because I'm not getting paid, but you should go play it. It's on itch.io. You could play it in your web browser, not on your phone. It's, it's not on your phone, but on your computer. Yes. Go play it. It's got some cutscenes. It's got some nice things. And I have a trailer on my YouTube channel about it. So yeah, go play Steamline. All right. Bye.